have priorities that government must fund, but those priorities are limited, and I believe with our founders that the government, the government's least, governs best. And I think Representative Wardlow is right. This rep represents a difference in philosophies here of what our priorities are for the state of Minnesota. Uh, and as you can see by the polls, and as you can see by uh, the victory of Governor Dayton, who rode his philosophy to uh, victory in the polls in November to uh, ensure that the richest Minnesotans pay their fair share, uh, is being hindered uh, by a small rump group of individuals who se seek to protect the richest Minnesotas at the expense of the rest of us. So in light of that, that, that government that governs best is the government that governs least, I was talking last week to a constituent of mine and a constituent came from a place who I think many of you over there would think is a, is a perfect place. It, it has uh, very little government, it has very low taxes, it's got a lot of guns, and from what he tells me, it's a hotbed of private sector ingenuity. Uh, he's Somalian, came here from Somalia. And when you got a problem, say you got a hole in your pirate boat, you don't have to go to a government licensed dealer and buy an approved product to patch up the boat. Uh, you just patch it up with whatever you need. Uh, and it strikes me that that would be perfect with regard to the priorities that some of you have for government in Minnesota, or should I say lack thereof. As it stands right now, our priorities are actually, and I, and I have to give you credit, Representative Anderson, we are making baby steps in progress because we've moved from talking about divisive social issues to actually finally addressing the budget. But you haven't gone far enough. You haven't taken up the priorities that the rest of Minnesota has, which are to ensure that we have some semblance of remaining investment and priorities in Minnesota, like we don't want to invest too much in education, we don't want to invest too much in our roads, we don't want to invest too much in grandma and the nursing home. But the rest of Minnesota members does. That's what they're telling you through their election of Mark Dayton, who won despite a Tea Party wave across the nation. And that's what they're telling you in the polls right now. And that's what they're telling you that they're sick and tired of the failure to compromise in the Minnesota legislature with a governor who has repeatedly come forward multiple times with a balanced approach that represents the priorities of the rest of Minnesota. Not the extremist priorities, as Representative Wardlow was talking about, of a place that does not take care of its own people. A place where you're at risk of getting sick, uh, a place where they, you don't watch out for your neighbor. That's what we do here in Minnesota. And I would ask you members today, please, we don't need to be Somalia. We're Minnesota. We're proud of that. We don't even need to be Mississippi or Arkansas. All the statistics that many of state about where we are, where we fall in the rankings, we fall high, as was stated by Representative Morrow, in our education. We're respected and are known for education. We used to be known for our roads, for the quality of our roads. We're not anymore. Now you can tell when you cross the border into Wisconsin or into Iowa. You know you don't need to see a sign, welcome to. You can tell by the condition of the roads. Members, I ask your priorities should be for the benefit of the people of Minnesota and ensure that it's, it's time to compromise. Come forward, talk with the governor. There is a middle ground here. Please vote yes on the motion by Representative Anderson.